Hello and welcome to How to Live Stream a Multicam Production Webcast, streaming nationwide. I'm Matt McLean, Marketing Manager, and this is Rick Paleo, Systems engin Engineer and TriCaster Master, Master of, of Keycode Media. Glad to be here, Matt. Before we get started, you can send us your questions throughout this entire presentation on Twitter. Uh, the hashtag is hashtag how to stream. How to stream, you know, somewhere right there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, before we get started, we're doing things a little bit different, and I'm going to have Rick explain. Well, the best way to do a demo, the best, best way to show how to do a live stream is to actually do something live. And we're going to do a live show right here today. Introducing Le Seattle 24. Yeah. Here we are in the beautiful Pacific Northwest in downtown Seattle. We're at Mount Rainier Speedway for the 2015 Le Seattle 24. 24 minutes of high octane racing. We have four cameras on the track to cover all the action. Let's take a look at turn one. That's the Seahawk chocolate sprinkle. We're gonna go through the chicane into turn three. That's Mike's feather boa. Down through the maple bar straight and into turn four, jelly roll, the most dangerous part of the track. Then back to the start finish line. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I see uh, Erica's car has run out of gas again. Our drivers today from the UK, James Road Rage Page. Born right here in Seattle, Doug, Mr. Hustle Russell. Get your brain ready as we race through the basics of production and show you the necessary hardware and software to be successful at live streaming. Rick, let's show off the production switcher. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, so it's really easy just that you've seen me switch between two cameras and you can see me switching back and forth there now. Let's take a look at what's really happening. So. Here we are looking at the interface. And this is the basic TriCaster interface. If you haven't seen it, it's laid out really great. Number one, up here, in this corner up here is our multi-viewer. This allows us to see all of our inputs. Look at that great shot right there. That's my favorite shot of Jelly Roll. This allows us to see them all in a small thumbnail view. We're gonna get into a bigger interface in just a moment. Of course, over on this side here, we have preview and program. This is what's going out, and this is what I'm going to cut to. So now when I make a couple of cuts, you can see it change immediately. All right, let's take a look at the center part of our interface right here. This is a graphical representation of a, of a switcher control surface. Over here on the left, I have all of my camera inputs. Next to that, network inputs, two DDRs, for clip playback, two graphic sources, frame buffer, black, and over on the far end, I have my mix and effects buses. In the center of the screen, we have our T-bar, easily transition between our preview and our program. And right next to it, an assortment of transitions from your basic dissolve to custom animated transitions. Anywhere between graphical, wipes, and burn. Feel the burn. Just to the right of that, I have our two downstream keyers. We can put any source anywhere on the screen. Total creativity, total control. Thanks, Rick, for giving uh, the basics. Um, for most of you out there who are unfamiliar with the TriCaster, uh, they recently announced a TriCaster Advanced Software Package that gives you some really enhanced features for if you want to make your production look a little bit more professional. Rick, can we cover the top five? You got it. All right, my top five new features in a new, oh, what a great crash, in the new Advanced Broadcast Edition. All right, I'm going to use the downstream keyer to put up a simple picture in a picture here. Of course, you know you have position, rotation, and scaling control. One of the new features are borders. A lot, of, a lot of presets already built in, including colored chrome and even picture frames. 
really cool feature, just adds to your production value. Number five. Number four, two upstream keyers in each mix and effects bus. What does that mean? Right here. Currently, this is a basic mix and effects with two pictures and pictures. Now I could add two more on top of that with, of course, borders. And this is not counting the two downstream keyers available to us on our main switcher control surface. So more creative control, more creative control. Number three, more options for output control. If you take a look at this, if you take a look at your new output control panel, your, your main output, your auxiliary output, HDMI, streaming and network, any source, you can send it out. Any mix and effects as well. Again, total control. Number two, improved clip playback. Check out, you've seen these clips before. Now they've got transitions in between them. I'm not doing an AB between the DDRs. I'm simply lining up the clips, hitting play, adding transitions in between them and hitting play. Super easy, total control. Again, more control, more creativity. And my number one feature on the TriCaster Advanced Broadcast Edition software is router control. Simply by right mouse clicking on any camera input opens up the control panel, opens up the inputs on the router that you currently have connected. Right now, I have a Blackmagic 16 by 16 video hub connected to our TriCaster 460. Any input, I simply select on it, it's in. While a product like NewTek TriCaster can do a lot, there are hundreds of developers making technology that can really enhance your production. Today, we're going to cover two. First, we're going to bring on, via Skype, John Naylor, VP of Streaming for Peza. He's going to discuss their new encoder and Peza Live. One second, John, let me get my head headphones on. Are you there, John? Hey, John, Hi, how are you? Great, and thanks for inviting us to participate oh, in this fantastic. podcast. So, from my understanding, uh, you guys just recently came out with a new encoder um, that works specifically well with the new tech TriCaster, but um, with a, a, a variety of other switchers as well. Um, can you explain, you know, obviously the new tech TriCaster already has a built-in encoder. Uh, why would someone need the P P PESA encoder? Um, what the PESA encoder allows you to do, and it's called the C22, is it's, think of it as an outboard streaming engine for TriCaster. Uh, so that instead of having TriCaster do the encoding and, um, and streaming, uh, you're taking all that burden, which depending on the model of TriCaster can account for up to 50% of the CPU, and you're putting it somewhere else. And the benefits in doing that are, well, you're taking 50% of the work off TriCaster, that just makes the rest of it run better. You know, your, your virtual sets, and your DDRs, and your graphics, and so forth. And you're also eliminating a single point of failure, because uh, now the stream will stay on air if something horrible happens. If, if, if the operator tips coffee into TriCaster, you know, that, that failover thing will work, and you'll get um, uh, one of the channels failing over to the output, and you'll still have a signal on air. Yeah, I, I know our techs here at Keycode Media have seen it in action and can't say enough great things about it. Um, it's a great product. Um, yeah, yeah the, cool th the, the really cool thing about it is that it's quite a mature product. What's new about it is that new tech have done the work to actually integrate it into TriCaster. So this isn't something that's, um, uh, that Pesa has done, it's something that oh, new tech have done. And so that means that the integration to the, the workflow is completely cool. seamless. Um, so I know the second product that we're going to talk about is Pays Alive, um, which kind of creates a new interactive experience um, for people watching a live stream. Um, we actually have it up and running for our webcast that we're doing right now, don't we? Cool. Yep. So, you, so you're taking um, 
this is a webinar about multicam so you're taking four camera angles and they're going into um, a PESA C58 encoder which produces a, a quad view and that is then streams and picked up by our app here it's called PESA Live and this is a free download from uh, iTunes or Google Play and maybe you can demonstrate it, uh, Matt. You can the user yeah. can actually change. So basically, the um, this is an app that I downloaded, and if you actually go to the bottom of the page that you're on today, it'll have instructions. That you can actually log in and see how this works. Um, we have all the four different inputs of the camera, touchable, and and switch to different angles of this um, of this race car race that we have going on. That I've got my oh, here in San Antonio. Yeah. That's very cool. Cool. All right, so we're going to go ahead and send you guys all uh, some more information about this after the webcast. Um, thanks, John, for joining us. Hey, thanks. Do you mind sticking around guys. for the Q and A later? All right, You're great. Delighted. One of the most exciting products I've found for broadcaster turns your talent into the next John Madden. Introducing Fingerworks by Telestrator. Let's take a look at it. Well, earlier today, I was pointing out areas on the track. For example, right here, that's where Erica ran out of gas. Or the fact that this right here is my maple bar. And this, oof, right there, if you don't come in slow, you are going to be in trouble and not going to be able to do anything. How am I doing this? Finger works by Telestrator. Here's the interface. I simply select a tool, for example, a zoom, and we could see right there somebody is going in the wrong direction. And they're going to break our track. <laughs> now he's going all right. And, and, and right here, these are my favorite donuts. So simply by selecting a tool, I can go ahead and highlight specific areas of the track anywhere on the screen, like right there. Again, that's where Erica ran out of gas. Very easy to use. To be honest with you, I've just been messing with it for the past 20 minutes. Here's a cool tool, a four-point four zoom. Simply by selecting four points on the screen, it zooms in. Very cool stuff. Finger works by Telestrator. One of the other great features of the new Tech TriCaster Advanced Broadcast Edition software is slow motion instant replay. Here's a crash from earlier during practice. Car comes in, goes flying off the screen. Well, let's add some more features to it. Not only are we seeing it again in slow motion, but oh, right, oh, ouch, it's got to hurt. So let's see where exactly he went wrong. He's coming in, obviously very hot, but right up here where he should hit the brake zone. Ah, uh, didn't brake nearly in time, spins out, takes out his, his opponent and himself. Sad day for Team Top Pot. Ooh, right there, right there. Spoiler goes flying, what a mess. Well, we hope you enjoyed the webcast. Uh, please continue to tweet your questions, hashtag HowToStream. Before we get to the questions, I just want to let you guys, uh, well, thank you guys for coming, and let you know Keycode Media, the ones that are putting on this webcast, um, we're the number one preferred reseller for live production equipment. Picking the right equipment can be an art. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of pieces that you think are going to work like advertised, and they don't. And luckily, Keycode Media has trained technicians and salespeople that can help you make the right decisions and ultimately get the gear that works and support it with a 24-7 technical staff. So with that, let me go to Twitter and see what questions we have coming in. <laughs> All right, the first question is for you, Rick. <laughs> Are you ready for it, Rick? Hey, hit me. All right. How does one become a TriCaster master? This might be about training oh god all right um yeah come back over all right I'll get over here all right uh to be a tricaster master is you have to practice 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 and practice some more 
I've always said that uh, live production is a lot like playing live music in a band. And uh, uh, yeah, it's been a busy morning. Um, so if you want to uh, uh, get good at it, I mean, there's two, two, aspects, two ways to look at it. I mean, you can go and ja uh, make it freeform jazz and just take the shots that look good or follow a script. And I think if you practice that, you become more familiar with the tools, and you can react to them and make adjustments and understand it better. So practice, practice, practice. One other thing that might be worth mentioning is there are all types of training opportunities offered by New Tech and Key Code Media. Uh, New Tech has a certification program for all of their switchers um, where you take a online test and become a certified TriCaster operator. Uh, for those that want to go even further in depth, we really recommend the hands-on training that Key Code Media offers with TriCaster. Yes, we do that here. We go on site. We train you on your equipment in your facility. Great. Uh, let's see. Um, I got one more from Ultimate 49er fan. Uh oh, <laughs> we're in Seattle right now. Go so. Hot. <laughs> All right. Ooh. So when pushing VFX titles, what sort of animations are least processor intensive? Um, uh, you know, the thing is, is that it's going to throw everything in a RAM. And uh, it starts out, you, you know, you build your animations, uh, sequential image files. And then uh, once you take it through, um, you know, the app, just uh, animation Let store mm -hmm. creator. Uh, uh, once you build that app and you can create your transitions, um, full screen animations are going to eat up more. Uh, lower thirds and small bugs and all that, they're going to take up less. I hope that answers that question. Okay. Give and me that, another one. That's pretty much it. I think uh, we'll give it one second, see if anybody else is, wants to throw in some last minute questions. Well, while, while we're waiting for yeah. some questions, we got to send out some thanks. Yes, we do. Number yeah. one, we got to say thank you to Top Pot Donuts. A proud sponsor of Key Code Media Seattle office. Kept us full of sugar all and morning. And keeping us <laughs> uh, cranked up on the sugar. Uh, special thanks to Pesa, John, mm -hmm. and uh, um, Telestrator. Course, Telestrator. Mm -hmm. uh, Fingerworks Telestrator by Telestrator. And we got to give a shout out to Andrew Tockage and New the Tech. New Tech TriCaster team. Correct. Yeah. Unfiltered Saki, Andrew. And um, so after, oh, we got two more questions coming in. Um, I got one from Above the Dogs. Uh, I may have missed it, but how would I utilize Wi-Fi with action cameras? Um, my, all right, this is me personally. You don't. You don't utilize Wi-Fi for action cameras. It sounds like a good idea. I don't think it's going to be reliable enough, but... Uh, you would take your receiver, and uh, you would either well. Wait a minute. You could probably you could probably use the new IP software and uh, the new uh, IP features, and you should be able to take it in as a network camera. So that's how you would do it. I personally would rather I'm give me HD SDI all the way. But uh, with the new IP features coming out and the new software, uh, you could have network attached cameras. Great. Anything all right. Else? I, I think that's it. So we want to thank everyone for joining out there. Um, we'll email everyone who registered a link to the recording of this on YouTube so you can share it uh, within people at your office, where you work, uh, friends or family. So thank you all for joining, and we hope you had a good time. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.